yes sir okay so now i'm going to start the recording it is taking some time let's see okay now recording is starting okay so as we already know that today this is a recap lecture and i will basically start from the beginning till now whatever i have discussed in this course i will co cover in today's lecture so it may be little heavy but uh, i think uh, you should not worry about that uh, because uh, once i will explain the slides and after that you can again go back and uh, read those presentations then it will be very easy for you to understand so in this particular as the name suggest this course is blast engineering and in this particular course uh, we want to study uh, the design of a structure the analysis of a structure and how to handle the blast engineering problems in an engineering way uh when your structure is subjected to explosion so this is a small footage see the kind of damage that explosions can do all of us are aware of that although we have not faced uh, first hand but we can see several videos several accidental explosions and other kind of damages that have happened in the past so this was the example of uh, explosion that happened in beirut in 2020 so in beirut there was a there is a port on that port regularly several ships are coming several cargo ships are coming and then there are several industries in those industries the raw material that is used is uh, sometimes chemical explosives are there for example ammonium nitrate so under certain conditions uh, those kind of chemicals can be prone to explosion and they they can cause explosion so such explosions are because of accidents so similar explosion happened in beirut because of an ammonium nitrate uh, uh, last year and this was a very big thing in the news so you can see all the damage of buildings that happened so certainly <coughs> when we are considering the design of structures uh, we should always uh, think uh, the situation if there is a possibility of such accidental explosions also because that that is very important so there are some other examples of accidental explosion for example if you see this this is a big hole that was created because of that explosion earlier there was a very big factory <coughs> a petrochemical factory and then there was a explosion very very significant explosion and now you can see what has happened so such situations can lead to very devastating damages and uh, economical loss human loss and uh, loss to the surrounding structures also so this is again the damage that has been shown during the beirut explosion you can see all the buildings are completely devastated and this shows the beirut explosion happening here in this zone now second source of explosion is terrorist explosion we know in india in other countries there is a very significant problem of terrorism and time to time different kind of events we have noticed nowadays you know what is happening in ukraine so similar situations can happen to the people there also and 
so there can be terrorism explosions i will not say that uh, ukraine is terrorism that is something else that is third case we will discuss after this slide so here you see this was the 1993 bombay blast all of you know some movies have been made on this topic so here you see the complete uh, punching failure of uh, the slabs column failure <clears throat> all these things are quite evident the structural uh, loss and similarly there was a in us in the city of oklahoma there was a car bombing that happened and that was uh, one of the biggest news in that time and you can see the kind of damage has happened to this uh, building so terrorist explosions are something uh, planned and uh, those explosions can cause sometimes even more damage compared to the accidental explosion because those are very carefully planned that where we will place our bomb and uh, that can damage to the buildings so for critical structures we should think if we can design them for certain level of terrorist threat now this is the third situation when explosions can happen during the war which i was referring to the ukraine situation currently so in hiroshima in 1945 all of us know that there was a nuclear explosion so this is a very popular photograph that you will see earlier this building was like this and after the explosion this is like this now you may be, you may be wondering why it is not completely demolished <clears throat> but you will be surprised to know that uh, this building was uh, several kilometers away from the actual location of explosion and although it was several kilometers away the damage you can see it is very significant because nuclear explosions create shock waves which can travel up to several tens of kilometers and then they can damage the structure significantly so that also depends what kind of explosion is happening so nuclear explosions are even more powerful compared to the chemical explosions so till now we discussed there can be different regions of explosion terrorism industrial accidents social unrest military situations and different kind of tools can be used for example ballistic missiles that can carry nuclear devices biological devices chemical devices vehicle bombs improvised explosive devices can be used by the terrorist and industrial processes also for example some industry that is creating some kind of gases or petrochemical industry there can be explosion now as a civil engineer we should we are supposed to design the structures we are supposed to provide the safe facilities so the question comes which facilities we should consider these kind of explosive loadings so there can be some government offices like the office or house of uh, prime minister or president or some important government offices which are prone to such uh, facility uh, such fatalities should be designed for explosive uh, loading if you remember there was an attack on our parliament few years back right so that attack was just uh, attack by some bullets and something but there could have been a significant bombing also so that's how uh, we cannot ignore the criticality uh, when it comes to some very key government offices then hospitals we should design for the uh, explosive loading for example suppose if there is a war for example if you see now currently in ukraine war situation is there and there will be so many people they will be hospitalized especially when there is a threat of uh, covid situation also so if our hospital will be devastated by the blast loading then where we are going to treat our people treat the army so that's why hospitals should also be designed for explosive loading bridges for example you see our campus like iit mandi there are few bridges small bridges which link the two different hills 
and suppose if that bridge is devastated or some other bridge is devastated due to this kind of explosive loadings so the completely there will be no communication between the two hills and that can be very much dangerous for if we are not able to supply the food the milk or other kind of things at the time of emergency so lifeline bridges should also be designed for uh, explosive loading then dams suppose if there is explosive loading on the dam and the dam fails if a dam will fail you can imagine it will lead to very serious secondary disasters because that water which dam is holding that water will flow in the valley in the reservoir and it will be completely uh, flood the entire region so the damage of dams can lead to very high secondary damages army facilities we should design army facilities for such kind of loadings because all the army facilities are always prone to such loadings so we cannot take chances for example what happened in uri uri it was basically a kind of uh, bullet attack and i don't remember exactly but such attacks may happen in future also so we should safeguard our soldiers by providing such facilities airports suppose if you damage the runway of airport and at the at the hour of need there is a possibility that you want to go by the flight because you want to safeguard your people you want to airlift and if you don't have a proper runway that operation cannot happen that's why airport runways should also be considered uh, in the design the blast loading should be considered similarly commercial centers nuclear power plants that can also lead to secondary disasters communication center suppose if communication centers are devastated there will be no channel of communication between the public that can also create a havoc schools there there are cases of school shooting in us so sometimes uh, some psychopath killers they are targeting schools so nobody knows uh, our kids should be safeguarded so these are the things and there are engineering ways of handling the situation how do we handle this situation in engineering way we have to assess the risk that is associated with threat hazards and explosive incidents i explained in the previous class what is threat what is hazard okay so i will not repeat that i will assume that you were present and you were listening so that part i can skip and to understand the structural behavior under blast shock and impact loads so as an engineer as a structural engineer it is our duty it is our responsibility to understand the behavior of a structure which is subjected to blast loading shock loading impact loading only then we can properly design our structure to analyze and design the facilities to protect lives and property correct to help in planning the effective rescue and recovery operations even if we are designing a structure we should also think about how suppose if there is a, some damage some blast happens what are the facilities that we should plan in order to effectively rescue the uh, people and conduct the recovery operations so that also comes in engineering approach of handling the situation and then something very important which is forensic engineering uh forensic engineering is basically something suppose some damage has happened once the damage has happened as an engineer we can go at that the at that site where damage has happened and then based on that damage we can learn we can understand what went wrong or what could have been done 
to avoid such uh, damages. For example, in Beirut explosion, lot of damage happened to the buildings. As an engineer, we can try to understand what kind of loading the structures were subjected to. And we also learn that we should design those structures for certain level of blast loading. So all those things we will learn once we study the forensics of such events. So that's why forensic engineering is also a very important part of handling such situations in an engineered way. In engineering, we solve any problem using three different approaches. There are theoretical approaches, numerical approaches and experimental approaches. We cannot rely on a single approach. Suppose if you are doing only experiment, then those experiment will be for a particular situation. We cannot generalize them in all the situations. So we have to develop some theory. And once we have developed the theory, we need to validate it. Also, if the situation is very complicated, as we have seen in some uh, slides uh, in my previous lectures, you might have seen, I was saying that uh, we can handle such situations, we can solve such problems using numerical models, using numerical softwares. So complicated situations can be handled using the numerical modeling, numerical simulation. But if we do not have the exact idea of the theory or of the or of the experimental implications, we cannot uh, justify that our numerical model is correct. Our numerical model may be wrong. There may be a problem of GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. If we are inputting wrong input, we will get the wrong output. But how we will know whether we are inputting wrong or uh, we are inputting wrong parameters? That we can understand if we have sound theoretical knowledge and if we have some experimental validation. So that's why we have to handle, uh, we have to solve these problems, complicated problems with a proper combination of theoretical, numerical and experimental approaches. Also, we need to collaborate with government, academics, terrorism experts and military army intelligence. Because these organizations, these people have lot of information, lot of uh, uh, resources which will inform you what is going to happen or what may happen, what kind of blast can happen. So without proper collaboration with them, uh, we cannot make a useful simulation or we cannot make a useful theoretical investigation or experimental investigation. So stakeholders provide so much information to guide you in the right direction. And there are different protective technologies which can represent the last layer of defense after all other layers of defense have been failed. For example, other layers of defense are intelligence, law enforcement, law enforcement, surveillance, barriers. For example, if there is a security guard and some terrorism is going to happen, so those security guards can stop those terrorists or maybe at least try to enforce the law before they can do some major damage to the structure. So there are different layers of uh, defense. We will also see in some slides how those different layers contribute to protect our structures. Now I come to the design threat. I already explained the meaning of threat in my previous class, but I will quickly go through this. Designers must know the threat before conceptualizing any design that I have already explained. 
explosion may be caused through various weapon systems or explosion devices in different combinations so we have to analyze what particular threat may happen and through which particular weapon it may happen for example if we are talking about the terrorist we can uh, we can assume that mostly it will be because of chemical explosions because it may be very difficult for terrorist to get a nuclear weapon but if there is a war between two countries there is a possibility of nuclear war so nuclear weapons can be used so we have to understand which particular situation which particular threat we are using in our design and an exact prior prediction of such events is never possible who knows what kind of explosion will happen what kind of uh, situation will be there we do not know so we have to design for an unknown situation and that is why we need to do a threat assessment we need to assess the threat based on the knowledge of the stock uh, stakeholders based on the knowledge of previous case studies based on our intuition based on the expert advice so threat assessment is required that would provide effective estimates of such incidents and then we can define our threat and we can design for that particular threat now in a very simple way i will define what is threat for example this is a building that as a designer you want to design for blast loading so you will assume that blast can happen at a distance r which is 200 meters and explosion may happen at a height say 230 meter and say the magnitude of explosion the yield of explosion the energy of explosion is 37 kiloton so this these three parameters this can be defined as a one particular threat scenario for which this building can be designed so like that we can design for different different threat scenarios and each threat scenario can be assigned particular probability so this is a basic example how do we define a design threat now in my previous slide i was talking about different defense layers so for example consider this structure the architectural drawing or you can say the layout so first there is a first layer of defense the green one that you see here and then there is a second layer of defense and then there is a third layer of defense which is completely inside we want to protect this particular area so first layer of defense is basically entry control point so control point so there may be check post there may be security guard there may be some surveillance so suppose if some attacker is going to come th through this way so they can provide some kind of defense then there is a perimeter which is site property line of, or a fence or some wall or some kind of arrangement which can stop the terrorist to come inside so that can be the second layer of defense and third layer of defense is basically your structure itself so we are basically interested in this third layer of defense because we are as a civil engineer we will assume that the first layer and the second layer have already been exhausted and now we want to protect this one so we want to design this structure that comes under the third layer of defense these layers can also be defined in two ways active layer and passive layer so active layer contains enable detection warning system some kind of delay by the security guards prevention of the hostile activities maybe by policing or some other uh, help we can stop the hostile activities so those are actively stopping the terrorism activity that comes under the active layer and in passive layer we can fortify our structure we can make our structure very strong or strong enough so that it does not collapse 
it does not fail under the blast loading and such structures and the design of such stru structures is known as structural hardening so that's why we say when we are designing something for blast loading we are we you will find this word very often in uh, blast uh, engineering that structural has been hardened or we are designing a hardened structure so those comes under the passive layer we as a civil engineer as a structural engineer we are interested in the passive layer if we are electronics engineer electrical engineer computer science engineer or cyber crime expert we may be interested in this active layer so civil engineers or mechanical engineers or you can say the school of engineering these are basically interested in the passive layer right now suppose if explosion happens what can happen what can be the different of, uh, effects of that particular explosion not only structural failure there will be nuclear radiation you remember from the nagasaki hiroshima people died because of nuclear radiation also so many people were prone to cancer then thermal radiation similarly electromagnetic pulse that will interfere with your communication system air blast the shock waves that will move on the ground surface <coughs> these shock waves will damage your structure then ground shock so if blast loading is happening it will also vibrate your ground the ground will be damaged the, the ground motion will propagate that will also apply a particular load on the structure cratering so cratering is that hole that you saw uh, in one of the slides i sh showed that uh, cratering in china right in the first slide so that is a crater crater is a kind of hole created by the blast load and then flying debris and fragments for example the explosion happens as you saw in the case of beirut the buildings were damaged and because of those damaged buildings lot of internal equipment internal uh, non structural components they were flying out of the buildings and those things can damage the surrounding structures so explosion can have several different kind of secondary effects also which can be very detrimental for the structure for the human and when we consider our design when we want to design a structure we need to have a design criteria so suppose if you want to design army facilities we need to ensure that army people are safe equipment are safe and there is no functional failure of the building but suppose if you want to design civilian facilities so we have to design such that at least we can safely rescue the people and we can safeguard our critical assets because if you will apply the same criteria which is for the army facilities on the civilian facilities then certainly there will be less damage but the cost of construction cost of uh, uh, design that will be going very high and that may not be afforded for all the civilian facilities therefore it is important to understand what is our design criteria what kind of structure we are going to design what is at stake and that's why we need to do this risk analysis so protective design objectives can be to prevent catastrophic failure of the structure to protect the contents personal and equipment from the effect of an explosion that's what i have explained now what comes under the protective planning for example you want to safeguard this building so there can be as i explained there are different layers of defense so planning those layers of defense comes under the protective planning for example we can provide a perimeter 
to increase the stand off distance so this r that you see here this is basically nothing but the stand off distance so that can be increased if you put our structure if uh, we provides suppose these walls are very high or somehow the vehicle cannot come inside so for example we are we want to design for a vehicle bomb so as a designer if we have this perimeter we can say that vehicle bomb cannot come inside this perimeter and this will be our standoff distance so bigger the perimeter we can have larger standoff distance but there will be restriction on the construction cost and on the land so we cannot go beyond a certain level so those are some uh, practical uh, limitations of of having this uh, perimeter but we can plan that for uh, critical structures and for this part for the building we need to make a protective design to avoid the collapse so all those things come under the protective planning for example let us consider this urban structure so suppose this is a suspicious vehicle so this sidewalk curb lane all these things can be the first layer of defense because we are kind of trying to keep it away it this vehicle the chances of this vehicle coming in this part will be very less by providing this additional sidewalk curb lane and street and in the second layer of defense there can be building yard so there can be some perimeter or something like that that can be planned in the second layer of defense and there can be uh, in the first layer of defense we can provide some kind of policing security guard or some kind of surveillance here and this is the third layer of defense where we design our building for an explosion happening in this particular vehicle so that comes under the third layer of defense in this course will be we will be focusing on third layer of defense so this is a simple urban structure suppose there is some very critical facility we can similarly design different kind of uh, layering system this will go in the part of planning the architectural plan planning or the layout planning of the building when we are designing for explosion phenomena so that will come under this also when we are making some protective planning we have to understand suppose if there is a blast in a particular building so there will be lot of flying debris which can lead damage to the surrounding structures so we have to understand that phenomena also what can be coming out from the flying debris similarly blast is there then there is a very high possibility of fire so we need to consider the fire protection also in our protective planning so these all are part of the protective planning this is i'm just giving a over overview of that in protective facilities there can be non structural components like protected perimeter i have explained essential sub subsystems like fire safety rescue plan i have explained and some essential equipment and in a structural component we need to design we need to understand the blast dynamics of the structure if we can do protection from the radiation by providing a radiation shielding that can also be a very good Uh, idea but before that we have to understand what is the risk otherwise why should we spend so much money and we should also consider the loading caused by the fragment debris dust and sometimes we also look into other aspects for example site selection we select the site of a critical structure such that there is a less risk of blast loading for example we can put our structure underground if we are putting any structure below, below the ground it will protect from the earth cover 
so earth cover will give some kind of protection at least from the radiation or direct shock waves and also it will be difficult to locate the target suppose if there is an underground nuclear bunker so it may be difficult to target by the enemy so underground sighting can be sometimes very strategically helpful in placing our critical infrastructure and then we can provide some protecting layers for example there are some buster slabs that are provided in the underground structures or some kind of uh, material we can uh, put outside our structure which can provide some kind of protection either by attenuating the blast or by protecting ourselves from the radiation or protecting from the flying debris so those can aspects can also be considered and are a good domain of research who are working in protective engineering now this is the same slide that i discussed in the previous lecture so i will not explain i assume that you already know what is threat what is impact what is vulnerability but i will explain this that once we have assessed our assets threat and vulnerability we can calculate the risk once we know the risk we can decide our remediation or countermeasure options based on that we have to do our cost benefit analysis because for example i gave the example of army facility and the example of uh, your uh, uh, civilian facility so we need to do the cost benefit analysis how much cost of construction will be and how much benefit we will get out of it so that is also very important for making any structure we cannot uh, make a nuclear proof structure otherwise uh, there will be no money left based on that cost benefit analysis we can make an engineering decision and then we can implement test and evaluate and we can also update our decision so that is the importance of risk assessment that's why we do the risk assessment so i have already discussed that what are the threat rating how do we define the threat i am not going to explain that that uh, you already know now impact i have explained in the previous class vulnerability i have explained so there was an individual assignment that you were supposed to submit now you can submit after this lecture and uh, that i will grade and uh, that i will enter into your mark sheet so this three assignment you have to list the name of agencies in india which can be contacted for threat information collection so from where we can go and collect the threat information that you have to write the list of the agencies that's it and list the state wise potential threats in himachal in arunachal and in j and k so what are different kind of threat earthquake threat snow avalanche flood landslide blast terrorism fire flood so in different states there is a different kind of threat so you have to list those potential threats and third assignment is that list the name of state of the art design manuals and guidelines which are mainly used by practicing engineers for blast resistant design so you have to search on google what are different kind of state of the art design manuals engineers use for designing protective structure and this is the group assignment in which i have explained uh, in the last class that you have to make a group and uh, you have to make a presentation in which you are supposed to assess the risk of cv raman guest house in north campus against a vehicle bomb so with all the information given in this particular lecture and in the last lecture you have to take a engineering judgment and make a risk assessment for civiraman guest house that will be really nice uh, exercise 
for example if you get a risk factor in this particular zone you will say it's a low risk if you get a risk factor in this zone you will say it's a medium risk and if you get beyond 176 you can say it's a high risk so that will be the final outcome for your assessment so that was the first lecture uh, any questions i can quickly take or otherwise i can start with the second lecture please let me know uh, sir in this group assessment uh, uh, sorry group assignment we all are in one group or one, how many groups sir? Uh, so uh, that's what I explained in the last lecture that uh, you can decide your group on your own. I'm giving you full freedom. So you interact with all the people registered in CE602. You can write an email on CE602 group. And among yourself, you just decide your group. Uh, I'm giving that freedom to you. There is no rule that there should be one people, two people or three people. Okay. 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 But try to, if you are online, if you are not in the campus, then try to make a group with someone who is already present in the campus so that he can provide you the data. Mm, okay, sir. Okay, so should I move on to the second lecture or uh, is, if there is any question, I can quickly take one or two questions. Sir, in effect of explosion, you told electromagnetic pulse. What is that? So, yes, uh, let me come. So when we are talking about the electromagnetic effect, it is basically happening uh, mainly in the case of nuclear explosion. When nuclear explosions are happening, they are creating so many waves. Electromagnetic radiations are being created. Those electromagnetic radiations interfere with our different kind of communication systems, maybe sometimes satellites. So that create an electromagnetic pulse. So that was the main idea behind that. You can read more about it. Uh, in the It generally happens in the case of nuclear explosion and uh, you will not see in the small explosions or chemical explosions. Okay. 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 So sh now I'm moving to the second lecture. I hope uh, it is not too much for you. Is it okay? Yes, sir. No problem. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very good. So now how many of you are present? So till six people. So someone else is joined. Deepak Kumar joined. And uh, okay, very good. Now I'm coming to explosion sources and phenomena. So till now we understood the risk analysis, the basic background of uh, uh, blast engineering. Now, once the blast is happening, we will understand what are different sources and what is basically happening when a blast is happening. What is the physics of the blast that we will understand in this particular lecture. Now, this slide is basically giving you an idea where blast loads basically lie in the zone of strain rates. So when we are talking about strain rate we can assign different strain rate to different kind of loading a strain rate is basically uh, defines how quickly or how slowly your material your structure your structural material is being loaded that is the basic layman's or you can say engineering layman's idea so suppose if we are talking about creep, all of us know that creep is very slow loading. That's why it is very slow strain rate. And then we consider quasi static, which are almost you can say very slow, just like creep. Then vehicular impact, plane crash, hard impact. So as soon as we are going towards the hard impact, missile, rock fall, the strain rate is increasing and then we see earthquake earthquakes fall in this particular zone of this magnitude <coughs> sorry and then we have explosive blast blast are generally in the higher range 
up to 10 to the power 3 sometimes this may go even higher so in this particular course till now in your bachelors you might have seen this strain rate in your masters you have seen this earthquake load so you came in this particular strain rate now you are moving to the senior masters level then you are coming in this particular restraint rate so now you will be dealing with the explosive blast types loads so you can see undergraduate postgraduate then slowly moving towards the end of the postgraduate so similarly your strain rate is also increasing so there are different types of sources types of devices of explosion for example nuclear weapons then there is a vapor cloud explosion which happens generally the industries dust explosion that happens generally in the coal mines you can read about uh, 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 or see their videos on the youtube if you are interested uh, i'm just explaining what are the different sources suppose if someone is asking you in the interview you can just tell few layer explosion industrial accidents then there can be conventional weapons for example small arms aircraft cannon projectiles grenades hand grenades bombs missiles so you see these are different devices that has been used for creating explosion so this is a basically small uh, diagram that shows what happens basically during a nuclear explosion so suppose there is a missile that is dropped and nuclear explosion happens so till now whatever knowledge you have can you guess what will happen just think a picture in your mind what will happen and after that i will show the second picture and just tell me whether that picture is matching with your imagination or not but maybe someone want to tell what different kind of things will happen just give it a try. There may be a tremor. Okay. Very good. Uh, that uh, shock waves. Yeah. And high pressure. Pardon? I did not get please repeat high pressure sir. high pressure very good that will be your shock wave debris hmm? debris debris very good that will also be there and so the structure near the explosive um, damage more and very the good. structure which is far from explosive uh, very good there will be some damage to the uh, i have not shown actually but certainly there will be some damage to the uh, um, i'm not able to okay um, just wait a minute huh? i don't know anyways so there will be some damage to the underground structure but i have not shown here there will be radiation fallout, air shock wave, firewall, cratering, and because of cratering, there will be ground tremors also, as uh, rightly pointed out by Manikanta when I asked. So there are different kind of uh, sources and devices. There is another example I want to show here in this particular sl slide that belongs to this armor piercing uh, projectiles. So suppose what happened in Uri or maybe what happened in the parliament the main attack was being done with the bullets so sometimes you might have noticed that when the bullets are hit to the structure there can be damage because of that projectile penetration so these projectiles move at a speed of one kilometer per second that is order of magnitude and that can that will carry lot of momentum lot of kinetic energy that can lead to significant damage and sometimes it can also contain high explosive charges right so therefore uh, based on what kind of threat 
may happen to a structure, we should also consider the loading due to these kind of projectiles also. Is everyone there? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. मुझे बीच बीच में बताते रहना पता नहीं चलेगा <laughs> क्योंकि मुझे वो दिख नहीं रहा इसके स्क्रीन में ऑनलाइन हूं कि नहीं आई एम एबल टू सी ओनली इन माई स्क्रीन एंड इन केमिकल एक्सप्लोजिव देर आर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ केमिकल एक्सप्लोजिव आर देयर लाइक टी एन टी एन एफ ओ विच इज अमोनियम बेस्ड गैसोलियम एंड आर डी एफ देर आर डिफरेंट केमिकल एक्सप्लोजिव बट वेन वी टॉक एज ए स्ट्रक्चरल डिजाइनर we go in some kind of a scaling we go in some kind of equivalence that equivalence i will discuss in future slides but you should understand that there are different kind of explosives chemical explosives which will lead to different kind of effects and how as a designer we consider all those effects we will come to know now in an in an explosion phenomena i have already discussed there is a dispersion of very huge amount of energy in a very short duration generally the duration of explosion is very small usually it is less than a second here i have written in microseconds but it can be 1000 microseconds 10000 microseconds also which will be basically of the order of milliseconds so generally you will see the explosion time histories or explosion uh, loads uh, have a duration very small that's why they create a impact phenomena or shock phenomena and there is a sudden re uh, release of energy which generate shock waves and shock waves move outward from the center of explosion as you see here and they affect all the structures that are coming in the way of uh, propagating waves so that is basically the explosion phenomena that is happening in this slide i will quickly because i already explained uh, when i was offline so maybe i will just quickly tell what is the difference between deflagration and detonation detonation is something that is a, you can say a high pressure phenomena but deflagrations are a small pressure phenomena and they can lead to different kind of damages and in the case of deflagration there is some response time that is available to the structures because these deflagrations are uh, governed by chemical kinetics and transport process and lead to small pressure but detonation detonation is something that we are going to deal in this particular course those are shock waves governed are governed by the hydrodynamics and basically are high pressure phenomena and shock waves that are created by the detonation they move at the supersonic velocity so can someone tell what is supersonic velocity just try what is meant by this term supersonic sir mach number more than 1 yeah that is okay but uh, in more simplest simplistic way what is mach number if you are going to the mach number it's okay but if you want to tell to someone what is supersonic with this word you can tell much much hello the answer is hidden in this term supersonic what is sonic speed of sound speed of sound very good the speed of sound and supersonic something which is more than the speed of sound very simple answer so these things are important that you explain something in a very simplistic way because these things are important when you appear for some interview so try to explain all the things in a very simplistic way supersonic something which is bigger than the speed of sound so shock waves in the case of detonation move at supersonic velocity initially okay now we see in more detail what is explosion phenomena and what is happening so there is a explosive material right i have explained that there are different kind of explosive material and then there is a exothermic chemical reaction so heat is coming out of that chemical reaction 
there are some oxidized products and because there is a heat coming out there will be a thermal pulse there will be sudden rise of temperature and from our gas equation we know that if there is a temperature rise and if we keep the constant volume there will be a increase in pressure also so that will lead, uh, uh, lead to sharp pressure increase and that's how the shock wave is created which is related with the sharp pressure increase that is basically happening in the chemistry of this explosion phenomena so now you should understand this figure very clear, very uh, carefully because this will help you in understanding next slides so some explosion is happening in this material which started from here uh, which is behind the shock front and your shock has reached at this location now this material is not yet shocked and shock is moving like this and slowly the shock will happen here also so this zone is transition zone this is the material which is already burnt the burning started here now slowly burning is going this side so this is the part that is already burnt and this is the part where combustion is happening at this particular moment and this is the part where nothing has happened till now but slowly the combustion will start happening in this zone also very carefully understand this figure now it is the same figure this zone is completely turbulent there is an unsteady gaseous flow because the because of combustion gases have been produced material is, has been burnt so there will be very high shock wave velocity in this particular zone and in this particular zone it is still steady unexploded state explosion has not happened here and the particle velocity will be very small because explosion has not yet reached here so we are seeing at a very micro level now i will make a ideal figure or typical figure which will explain what is happening at the particle level now i will suggest that you take out your uh, book pen and try to do some calculations which i will tell so are you ready hello yes sir okay okay i was afraid that i'm now offline but it's okay so now please take out your books and pen make this diagram so this is zone a this is basically zone a where explosion is happening i don't know why it is not moving just a moment eh? i am trying to see i did not working anyways so let me show again ha huh? so there are different particles in the zone a where explosion has already happened that's why i have shown it in red this red is basically the moving shock front and in this one this is the still in steady state and nothing is happening here now come to come in the frame of reference of the shock front so shock front will come in the state of rest and there will be relative velocity with respect to the shock front like this for uh, material a and material b material a is material after shock and material b is material before shock that's why i have given the name a and b when i am talking about a it means the material after shock b material before the shock so this will be the velocity 
vectors or you can say velocities of particles with respect with reference to the mo moving shock front now your shock front is steady so now it will look like a problem in which material is flowing from b to a right now you please try to write mass conservation equation consider per unit time per unit cross section rho v is the density before shock tv is the pressure in this particular zone rho a is after shock density and pa is after shock pressure so please try to write mass conservation i want to know who can write it correctly please try and then i will come are you guys writing abhishek yes sir okay please please write it is very easy should i show the answer now sign hello sir yes sir uh, there was a continuous issue deepak deepak yes sir yeah are you able to write mass conservation yes sir okay this is the answer you can very easily understand how this mass conservation is happening so it is like material coming from b going in a should be equal then try to write mass momentum conservation i know it will be very difficult but at least try if you can try i am going to show you that this is the momentum conservation equation i do not expect that you will write it but if you can prove it it will be very nice if you can prove that momentum conservation equation will lead to this it will be really interesting it is nothing but just class 12 basic physics not more than that are you trying जी सर ट्राई कर रहा हो यस सर सो यू कैन सी द सोल्यूशन हेयर आई हैव ब्रॉट माई बोर्ड to your screen so here i have put this momentum conservation equation which is very simple so you see this is detonated portion this is undetonated portion and you can write that rate of change of momentum that is m into delta v upon delta t in unit time will be equal to the applied force which is pressure difference into unit area pa minus pb and then you use mass conservation equation here that you see here along with this equation and then do little bit of mathematics 
delta v is nothing but change in velocity of the particle from going from zone b to zone a which is u a minus u b you plug all that stuff into this one and this will lead to this equation so it is very simple you can try it later i have already shared the slides now we will move to the next slide so now in the undetonated portion we can simplify that the velocity of particles is very small or you can say zero because this portion is undetonated so just try what will be the mass conservation equation in the undetonated case will you try just plug in u b equal to zero in your previous equation why i am asking you to to write because this will give you some feeling of these equations and all those things otherwise it will be difficult for you so in your previous equation what was that equation rho a u minus u a equal to rho b u minus u b so just put u b equal to 0 so you will get rho b into u very simple i have written here in momentum conservation what was your momentum conservation equation just see in the previous uh, uh, if you have written you will find it otherwise you can directly see here this is p a minus p b equal to rho b u into u a if you put u b equal to 0 in that equation now there is a third equation which is energy conservation so with this assumption we can simplify our energy conservation equation that's why i have taken this assumption that in undetonated portion u b equal to 0 now you have to write energy conservation equation i will tell that there is a, this term h which is enthalpy per unit mass this is nothing but you can say internal energy per unit mass so in this area internal energy per unit mass is h a and in this area internal energy of particles is h b so now how we can write energy conservation equation so energy conservation equation can be written like in zone a zone b the kinetic energy plus potential energy should be equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy potential energy what internal energy now you please try just try after that i will show the answer and then check whether you are able to get it right or not abhishek Kala? Hi, yes, sir. I wrote. So tell me, is it this that you have written? Mass. Oh, mass is not. Yes, same. Same, right? Yes. I have added mass or M also. It is not. Okay, okay. So what same. I have what i have assumed here uh, this is per unit mass correct because this is per unit mass so we have written energy conservation per unit mass right and mass is equal m a equal to m b so now we move to the we now have mass conservation 
momentum conservation so again with little bit of mathematics we can very easily show that uh, momentum conservation can be written like this this we have already written this can be further written like this in terms of density of before shock after shock shock velocity and density why i have written like this you will come to know shortly there is a reason behind that but here is the explanation how we have written so uh, this you can directly see in the slides when uh, that is already shared on the moodle it is nothing but a small mathematics here um, i will say the simple arrangement that's it now when we talk about the energy conservation this equation we have already uh, written now there is because this is a thermodynamic phenomena some heat is uh, uh, coming out of the system so we should also write the heat equations and gas equations i do not expect you to be expert in thermodynamics and writing all these equations because uh, this is more towards the thermodynamics and uh, i do not expect that so that's why i have directly given uh, the basic derivation here that for unit mass this was the change in internal energy if we multiply with the mass m so this will give you the complete uh, change in internal energy for the entire mass so that change in internal energy will be reflected in the change in temperatures which is written by cp cp is the heat capacity multiplied by the uh, temperature difference that can be given by this equation this all equations are coming from the thermodynamics so no need to worry about that you have to just understand that these are coming from there and if we use our ideal gas equation pv equal to nrt in this particular system and if we apply this we can very easily write these two terms pv upon rho b and pa upon rho a these are very important because this is giving you the ratio of pressure to the density after shock and pressure to density before shock and they are related with the temperature change so why these are important uh, because we are going to see that in coming slides these are the small parts we have derived till now now we can write change in enthalpy or change in internal energy using all these uh, derivations that have been shown here we can very easily write like this you can try it on your own later but it can be written and from this equation energy conservation equation that you see here what we have right here so ha minus hb uh, we can also relate with the u minus u a whole square by 2 minus u square by 2 right from this equation and this equation now just a small note that here we are using ideal gas equation but we know during the explosion explosion the situation will not be the ideal gas situation so ideally we cannot use this equation but we have used it for simplification in reality there are empirical equations that fit the actual post detonation gas state and these kind of equations which you see the pressure volume relationship is in the form of exponential relation and power relation so these kind of equations are used in your numerical models when we do the numerical modeling but when we are doing the simple derivations analytical derivations we are using this one the ideal gas equation because this simplifies our life but this is not the reality reality is this one which we generally use in the case of numerical models so you should know about it but it's okay uh, once you will be doing some numerical modeling in future or at if you are working in some industry where you are, you are going to design some blast resistant structures then maybe 
you have to use this kind of application or if you are doing some research in particular uh, blast engineering topic then you will again come back to these kind of equations so you should have a basic idea of that so this was a small note now if you remember that i was showing that this was the equation of energy conservation and we have the term for ha minus hb which we derived like this using the thermodynamics in the previous slide that can be equated to this right now we further simplify this one and we can write like this so let me remove this now you just take your time and try to see this is the mass equation that we have already written we have our momentum equation now you now you will come to know why we wrote momentum equation in this particular format in that previous slide now with the help of mass equation and momentum equation we can simplify this term like this you just try to solve this one just take a minute or two kala yes sir just try just uh, do some maths little bit try abhishek are you trying deepak yes sir just keep trying okay sir little, little bit of math abhishek i'm not hearing anything from you are you here or lost sir i lost lost abhishek are you lost no sir uh, some time before i lost my connection so oh, i Okay, okay, okay. So once you simplify this one, you can further simplify like this. The momentum equation. actually there is nothing to explain it is just uh, simplification you can do it on your own based on this all these simplifications we can write the equation of shock huguenot this is very important equation that we were deriving in this entire lecture and its importance you will understand now why this equation is important so till now this one we have already seen this this was the one that came from the thermodynamics this part came from the energy conservation now if we rearrange this one it with using the expressions in the previous slide using the expressions from previous slide we can get this equation which is known as shock you know i have told you that a means after shock b means before shock now my question to you is can you tell me what this equation is telling why did we do all that math what is the importance of this equation all the information is for you available on this slide just read this and make a guess why 
what this equation really tells please try let me see who can tell me what this equation is telling it's very simple very straightforward you have to just translate this mathematics in words in physics kala try just try make a guess no problem if you are wrong it's okay no need to worry nobody knows try kala sai deepak yes sir in energy conservation sir uh no but energy conservation is something that we have already done but this came out of energy conservation you are right we did energy conservation equation all those things we wrote but finally we reached here so what is this telling this equation what this equation is telling you abhishek so no idea <laughs> uh, i know that you do not have an idea but uh, at least you can try see hint is the a means after shock b means before shock now try what is this pa is pressure after shock pb pressure before shock rho a density after shock rho b density before shock pa is pressure after shock pb is pressure before shock rho b is density before shock rho a is density after shock so now you can think something you see the terms after shock and before shock and you see pressure term and you see the density term now tell me what it shows nobody okay the above equation relates pressure and density behind the shock wave with the pressure and density ahead of it very simple this was the main meaning of this entire mathematics this equation relates pressure and density behind the shock wave with the pressure and density after the shock wave that 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 is the only thing this is telling you this equation relates so that is the importance of this shock huna because if you know what is happening before pressure uh, before shock wave you can relate that with the pressure and density after the shock wave that's very simple now this is the same equation if you rearrange it little bit more i am doing nothing i am just rearranging it okay now rearrange it little bit more now we get this equation this is another form of the same same equation which is known as rankine huygens equation and this equation is telling you nothing but this equation represents the sudden property change across the shock wave front because in the shock wave there was a sudden change in property if you see this was here shock has happened here shock is going to happen and this is the boundary so at the boundary there is something that is sudden changing at this particular boundary which is situated at x0 so if we plot the graph between the pressure with x so x you can measure from here say this is x equal to 0 say assume and we are moving in this direction so what is basically happening at the shock wave front shock wave front there you see sudden change in pressure a sudden change in density you see here this zone this zone is nothing but this 
so this is sudden thing that is happening that was defined by the rankine huguenot equation so this is basically your reaction zone and this sudden spike that is coming in the pressure because y axis is your pressure so this is representing your pressure this is nothing but the von neumann spike it is just a name and this is your shock front that is moving with shock wave velocity u this one and this represents your unreacted material you see the pressure is very small in this particular zone and near the reaction zone near the shock wave front the pressure is very high and before the jump basically if you see here this is a if you take a particle here which is just before the shock wave you will find a small pressure comparative to this particular peak which is known as chapman joga plane or you can say the chapman joga state and after that there is a sudden spike in the pressure because of the shock wave because of the moving shock wave so that's how the shock wave is traveling inside this particular material and at the boundary where the shock wave is present at the moment that basically defines how there is a sudden spike in the property property means pressure or change now this detonation process we will try to plot in pressure volume plane or you can say pressure one upon density so this volume v is specific volume which is nothing but one upon density of the entire explosive material so in at initially there was no explosion suddenly you put some fire or you ignite it so there will be explosion that will start happening so basically your material is going from state 1 to state 2 so state 2 is fully shocked state of solid explosive because initially your explosive will be in some solid format so here in this particular curve we have not assumed that there will be any change of state without considering state change there is no state change means solid should go to the gas but in this particular curve we have not assumed that state change so this curve is known as solid explosive hugna which is in the pressure volume curve uh, volume plane so at this point explosion starts then it goes there but this is hypothetical curve because we have not assumed any state change but in reality what will happen there will be a point 3 this pcj is chapman joga plane that i was showing in the pressure that cj state of the explosive so at this moment at 3 the shock wave has reached uh, to that particular point and this is the cj state known as cj state so the thing is the point one two and three all the line in the straight line and known as Rayleigh line and once your explosive changes from solid to gas you will need a gas huna basically this part is showing the curve if you consider your explosive to be completely gaseous but in reality what is happening there is a solid explosive which is which starts burning you can say or combustion starts explosion starts it is going to this location which is cj plane after cj plane there will be a sudden jump in the pressure so once there will be sudden jump in the pressure it will move to the gaseous hugna and then it will follow this particular curve the gaseous hugna curve it will follow at the time of explosion 
so this curves that you see the the blue curve the green curve all these curves are the properties of material explosive material each explosive material has this kind of curve the characteristic curve and those characteristic curves are required to be provided at the time of numerical modeling which will be used in defining the pressure shock pressure created by the explosion and its relation to the density of the explosive material so am i still there or am i offline yeah there okay no lines so okay so uh, this curve is little bit complicated but what i will suggest you just go through it if you have any doubts you can write an email to me or you can have a separate meeting with me i will love to discuss but do not need to worry if you will think this is a very basic concept i have also shared the textbook on the moodle if you have any doubt you can ask me or the best way is just type gas hibuna solid hibuna hibnoid curve on the wikipedia or google scholar that will give you enormous material on that and you can read more material because limitation of time i cannot discuss all that material here but i will have i am i am trying to give you some basic idea that what these kind of curves uh, try, are trying to tell you and the, how they relate the pressure with the density of the explosive material so explosive material density is changing during the explosion because the pressure shock pressure is also changing that's why uh, we need to draw all these curves so uh, if there are no questions then we can move to third uh, lecture or if there are one or two questions we can quickly take anyone oh, sir yes sir uh, can you go slide number 23 23 yes sir is this a or b is same material or different material a and b are the same material but the part a is exploded but part b has not exploded yet okay and sir why this density change so see uh, when explosion is happening some other materials are being produced like gaseous materials or the particle velocity is changing so the state of material is basically changing so density how density is defined density is defined how particles are closely spaced or far spaced right so that's why the interaction of particle is changing and then their density is changing so when okay. other materials are being produced those produced materials are trying to compact the entire system and that's how the density is changing uh, so what so it will increase or decrease pardon sir whether it is increase or decrease density obviously yes, so suppose explosion is happening then density will increase because there are other materials that are coming to the picture but uh, sir material is uh, before so uh, before so it is uh, consolidated but after so it will be scattered like right? so yeah I, uh, this thing you have to understand that here we are trying to uh, say that the material volume is not changing significantly okay and basically that scattering that you are saying you are uh, you are thinking the explosion in terms of that everything is going away right but here yes sir ha huh, yes that is the that is the thing that is creating problem because uh, this particular a and b that you are seeing here it is showing what is happening within the material not in the environment don't uh, throw the material in the environment just think that what is happening within the material for example in class 12 you must have studied uh, one problem Uh, of uh, piston 
piston problem there was one question in thermodynamics uh, that there was a, this uh, i will just show mm, like this kind of problems were there so this was a piston and some gas was here and the piston is moving with some particular velocity and then we were trying to do some thermodynamics on that so basically in the explosion the same kind of thing is happening that there is some explosive material okay and then what is happening basically inside that so in within that material that is being told by this entire phenomena but i understand sometimes intuitively it may be difficult to understand because uh, this is a completely new thing and uh, generally not taught in civil engineering so it may take some time what my suggestion is just read some material and maybe uh, do some extra study uh, what is happening that will help you in understanding this phenomena right but at least you can understand this all thing that is happening we are considering within this boundary the dotted boundary and nothing is going outside this boundary you can uh, understand like that and uh, this is basically the explosive material this part is burnt this part is not yet burnt okay and when you are talking the density here you can say this is the entire density the weighted density of this entire material so for example uh, initially the material is unburnt before shock then slowly it is moving to a plus b and then it is going to a so after some time this entire part will be burnt so at this moment the density will be changing depending upon where is your shock front so say the density here is rho a here the density is rho b so maybe for the entire system you can uh, write an approximately the density is like rho a uh plus rho b and maybe some weight you can assign say w a w b and uh, divide by w a plus w b some weight you can assign so that weight will depend upon the mass or uh, you can say the density may be entire system is total mass divided by total volume or something like that you can try to write approximate approx uh, expressions so like that when we are talking density here we are talking density of the entire material where one part is burnt one part is not burnt if there sir, are no yes sir what is the meaning of cj state so cj state is basically uh, this when your pressure is increasing at this particular location where shock wave is there just before that this state is has been defined by some scientist which is basically telling you that at this part just after this particular state there will be a sudden spike in the pressure so basically uh, the meaning is they are defining some critical state which is linked with you see this particular point 3 in the pressure holding curve and why it is defined because this will be used in numerical modeling and some other calculations so that's why this state has been defined but basically this is a state of material after which there will be a sudden jump in the pressure so basically you can say the critical state or after which there will be sudden jump or there can be change in state possibility of change in state at this particular uh, pressure level uh, sir this uh, shock trend means it is only a transition to zone between burned and unburned area right no, sir uh, i am not getting please repeat trend means it is only the transition zone between the burned and unburned area correct yes. no sir yes yes exactly exactly so that Why? yes sir, yes Uh, change in uh, like uh, increase in pressure in that portion. Uh, where which? Uh, which that uh, uh, this uh, spike in the pressure that this, is happening at uh, uh, shock front only, right? Sir? Yeah. So basically, this shock with that uh, transition zone that you are seeing here, this is of very 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 infinitesimally small width. Okay. so there is a discontinuity so you can say if you take x0 plus epsilon 
and x0 minus x epsilon where epsilon is limiting to 0 so this pressure spike that you see will be at x0 uh, you can say exactly at the x0 or you can say x0 plus epsilon or x0 epsilon will be at this point and then there will be this x0 where will be sudden spike and then there will be x0 minus epsilon where you can say the cj zone it's like that so uh -huh. So what I was asking is why there is a, what is the reason behind that pressure? Pressure is spike. Yeah. Okay. So because this is the shock wave. Uh, so if you remember that what ultimately is happening, there is a sudden energy release that is leading to the pressure in, uh, pressure increase. For example, if you go to uh, this slide where I explained this one, right? So there will be sharp pressure increase, right? At the front of shock wave. That's why this shock wave is created. This material is spreading energy very fast. And that fast release of energy is leading to a kind of shock wave. So the shock wave is moving and the shock wave is causing this sudden pressure increase, right? So that's why there is a sudden rise of pressure at the shocks. So so basically, shock is a kind of discontinuity in the pressure volume curve, right? Or, or we can say pressure versus X curve, what I have shown here. Uh, this one. So this, yes. So should we move ahead? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So now I'm closing this one on save. Now I will be starting with the third lecture that is blast scaling, which is a very small lecture I have already discussed. So you remember, I told you that there are different kind of chemical explosives and different kind of explosives will lead to different kind of effect, different kind of uh, pressure. So as a civil engineer, as a designer, as a structural engineer, how we can handle with different kind of explosives? So there has to be a uniform criteria. So why scaling is required? Different explosives would produce different magnitudes of blast effect. Correct? What are the key blast effect? We have already seen air over pressure, ground vibration, radiation, fire, temperature, ejecta electromagnetic impulse right so to find a basis for comparison and to develop uniform design charts and design calculations we will use equivalent tnt values so here you see equivalent tnt this so tnt is considered as a standard explosive and with that standard explosive we convert all the explosives different different explosives to the equivalent TNT now what is the meaning of equivalent TNT so suppose there is some unknown explosive of unit weight for example we do not know suppose we are taking that ANFO okay so we are taking unit weight of this, say 1 kg. So now how we convert it to equivalent TNT. So TNT is our standard explosive. So we need to convert ANFO to equivalent of TNT. So the idea is that ANFO, 1 kg of ANFO will produce some effect, some shock effect. For example, say pressure, energy, heat, temperature rise, something like that, any, any of the shock effect. And the question is, how much weight of TNT we should consider, which will produce the same pressure or same energy or same temperature. That will be considered as equivalent TNT for this particular explosive. So instead of doing the cal design calculation for 1 kg of ANFO, we will do the design calculation for W equivalent of TNT 
and all the design charts have been developed for equivalent TNT. So these equivalence relations for different different explosives are available in the literature. So whenever required, we can convert this to particular weight W of TNT and that we can use in our design. Now, here is one small example. Suppose we are considering a specific heat of rejection as a criteria for nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is an explosive. So a specific heat of rejection of nitroglycerin is 6700 kg per kilojoule per kg. And a specific heat of rejection of TNT is 4520 kilojoule per kg. So how we can convert equivalent TNT, uh, get the equivalent TNT for nitroglycerin. So this means that based on the heat of reaction ratio, that is 1.48, each kilogram of nitroglycerin is equivalent to 1.48 kilogram of TNT. So this 1.48 kilogram of TNT is W equivalent for nitroglycerin when we are considering specific heat of reaction. Similar equivalencies can be established using the other blast parameters such as peak over pressure, impulse, etc. So generally in civil engineering, we are interested in over pressures, the pressures, blast pressures. That's why you will find equivalence based on this or sometimes on impulse also. But there are different criteria. We are not going to go into that, but that can be developed and read in the research papers. Now, this is one kind of scaling you can say or equivalence. Now there is another thing which is cube root scaling law. What this law says, I think I have explained in the previous uh, lecture also, uh, means yes, uh, day before yesterday's lecture, that suppose this is the building and we have two different equivalent loads, W and W1. So at this particular building, at this particular location, we can get the peak over pressure, same peak over pressure if W1 is kept at a distance R1 or capital W is kept at a distance capital R. So it means there has to be a relation between W and R which causes the same pressure if kept at different distances. So this is the basically that relation which is known as scaled distance. For example, in this particular case, this explosion at a scaled distance of lambda, which is equal to R upon cube root W. And in this case also, this explosive is also at a scaled distance of lambda. That's why they are causing the same pressure. So that's how scaling laws have been developed. And these are very much useful when we are doing the design because all design charts are developed based on these scaling laws. And this is very much used in the industry. Uh, I am still online. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. So now, uh, when these laws are applicable, so when we are considering identical ambient temperature, pressure, humidity for both the explosives. So I saw two explosives, right? One was W and one was W1. So if they are in the same ambient temperature, pressure and humidity, only then these laws will be applicable. Otherwise, there are different scaling laws or different changes are required. But generally, for design purpose, we assume that this condition holds true. And because that is a, a, a cube root scaling, so it is assumed that charges are is of spherical shape, but this is not necessary. But this is not necessary. But for this simplification, this is another assumption that our explosive is confined in a circular system, which is producing circular waves uh, or spherical waves. Experimental studies have shown that these scaling laws are correct for the charge weights up to hundreds of tons. So if charge weight means W is of hundreds of tons, 
one ton is thousand kg. So these laws are valid. So which is quite sufficient and useful for our uh, civil engineering practices. Also, these laws are applicable irrespective of, irrespective of charge geometry if the standoff distance is very large. For example, building is here and your charge is some other shape which is non-spherical. But if it is too far from the building, right, very far, then the time the waves will reach to the building, they will be almost plane waves. And then we can again use the spherical uh, assumption because even if the waves, if the structure is very far from a spherical, uh, 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 spherical charge at very far location, it will be like plane waves for the structure. So here also plane wave, here also plane wave. So we can use the assumption of spherical shape if standoff distance is very, very large compared to the structure. So in all those conditions, these cube root scaling law laws are applicable. Now, what is the basis of cube root scaling law? We will understand. So suppose this is your charge here at the center and spherical waves are produced like this and these spherical waves are moving outward so at this location the uh, the radius of the spherical wave is r1 then r2 then r3 so slowly slowly your uh, radius is increasing so total explosion energy which is produced by this uh, explosive is directly proportional to the yield of the system or you can say that equivalent weight so energy per unit volume can be written as energy divided by the volume of the sphere this spherical wave front at particular location and energy per unit volume will be proportional to w upon r cube so r cube is coming from here and energy was proportional to w so that's why we wrote energy directly proportional to w upon RQ. So all the blast effect will be inversely proportional to 1 upon R cube root W. So how this is coming? So blast effects are directly proportional to the energy per unit volume. Right? And if you write this one, this can be written as R cube by W. Right? And if you take the cube root, this can be written as r by w cube root 1 upon so which is this so your blast effect are inversely proportional to r upon cube root w so in the previous slide i have shown r upon cube root w is nothing but the scaled distance so if your scaled distance will increase so suppose this is the explosion and this is the structure and if your scaled distance lambda is increasing your blast effects on this particular building will also be smaller. So that's how we get this concept of scale distance or we get the concept of cube root scaling like this. So now please uh, bring out your pen and paper. There is a small quiz that you have to get the scale distance for the following case. So I will give you 10 minutes and you can tell me the expression because now uh, this quiz has already happened answer is already on the Moodle so I will consider it as a uh, class assignment for you guys and uh, you can simply uh, prove that scale distance in this case is given by this using the expressions using the derivations done in the previous slide just try and uh, submit your uh, class assignment on the on the Moodle just try and submit maybe you can submit later also but at least try for the moment Abhishek yes sir yeah so please try this one
This is very simple. Sir, I have tried it before this. Okay, so but I, I, sir, I, I have end out. Yes, sir. Uh, in this problem, uh, one thing is always with here key uh, that uh, the building is in longitudinal direction or in transverse direction. The sir, if building is in axial direction to this road, okay. This scale fact, scale distance comes out. Yes, sir. But so, if reading or any is in transverse direction. Yeah. So, this, so yes, 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 yes. So generally means uh, it is assumed that basically the building structure will be very very large compared to this kind of uh, what we say the uh, this kind of explosion. Okay. So first of all, there will be a size factor. That size factor, uh, how it will affect? That is the question. Second thing, what you are saying? Suppose this charge is shape is of the order of magnitude of the building, building size. Then what you are saying? Maybe, maybe very important. Okay, but. All these scaling law, all these uh, simplified versions are for simplified uh, analytical understanding. But what you are saying may make a difference when we are considering uh, the size of this, uh, the, the, the length of this one and the dimension of this one, which is when equivalent to the dimension of the building that you are considering. But if it is very, very small, it will not make much difference. And secondly, all these scale uh, these things are being used when we are talking about the uh, incident over pressures. So the pressure created by this kind of spherical charge, uh, sorry, cylindrical charge. You are right because in this case there is uh, no symmetry in the longitudinal direction in this direct, axial direction but when we are going in this direction there is a symmetry axial symmetry what was happening in the case of a sphere there was a symmetry all around you are right right so therefore it was very easy to understand but in this particular case it is inherently assumed that we are talking about this this case only And for this case, certainly this may not be exactly valid, but this will be approximately you can use in your design applications. But generally, when we are talking about the cylindrical charge, we are assuming that we are considering the structure is in this particular zone. Right? Yes, sir. So just try this one and uh, please submit this as a class assignment. I will grade and I will enter marks in your uh, answer script. So this was the end of the lecture number three. Any other question? If no question, then maybe we can go directly to the fourth and the last lecture which will not take much time because uh, I already covered something in the last class. So suppose uh, there is an explosion happening in air. There will be air shock waves. When these air shock waves will interact with the ground, there will be reflected waves. And these reflected waves will interfere with the incident wave. You see at these points. I will just take some water. So these interaction points of the uh, incident and uh, reflected waves are known as triple points and the pressure in this zone as you see here, 
these are the this one this one are the match fronts because this is the interaction zone of the reflected wave and the incident wave and generally the pressure is higher compared to the incident incident wave in this particular zone and when we design we try to design our structures for this particular zone but if your structure is very very close to the explosive charge it may happen that some part of the building is subjected to the incident pressure and some part of the building is subjected to the match mac uh, uh, reflections but generally in normal cases as a designer we consider this case we design for this case but if you want to design for these cases you have to do more advanced computational fluid dynamics analysis and other kind of softwares you have to use but for manual calculations we generally assume and this mostly works so here you see i have already explained these are the mac stains this is the ground surface explosion is happening blast waves are moving towards the structure and ground reflected waves are also moving towards the structure those are interacting and then they are impending some load on the structure suppose if explosion is happening just above the ground then there will be no mac wave but the structure will be designed for the incident wave the effect of incident wave right and usually this is the idealized figure which i have shown there in that slide also so this is the match stem in this zone and then there is a some part of the ground reflected wave which must have interacted with the incident wave so this is the case of surface explosion that is happening so the idea, the idea is for different different kind of uh, explosion scenarios different kind of loading will occur on the uh, on the structure and we have to take care of reflected waves and uh, incident waves and their interaction while considering the loading on the buildings so we will see in future how those loads will be calculated but at this moment you have to just try to understand uh, physically intuitively what is happening now in this particular slide it is the same thing which has been shown so basically explosion is happening uh, somewhere at a particular uh, height and uh, this is the angle of incidence for this particular point of the structure and uh, structure is situated in this uh, zone of mac reflection so structure can be designed for this mac reflection so these points where incident reflected and mac wave interact are known as path of triple point so this is just a terminology which is uh, already available in this manual and which is very popularly used for uh, designing blast resistant structures and the distance of structure this is uh, rg ground distance from the ground zero ground zero is this point just below the location of explosion this one and this is the height of burst so all these uh, terminologies are given and uh, you can see in the slides now this graph uh, this uh, thing i have already explained in my previous class so i am not going to repeat this one this i have explained you because for this one you were creating that matlab code this was also i already discussed in my previous lecture so no need to discuss this again now this is nothing but showing how reflected pressures will look like so here you see that this is the profile of reflected pressures and this dotted one is the profile of incident pressures so why reflected pressures are higher we will understand when we will discuss the wave propagation and wave reflection uh, those concepts in this course but at this moment the main take away message is that incident pressure and reflected pressure have more or less same kind of profile which has been discussed in this particular uh, slide so we can idealize both of them like this now uh, this is a empirical chart which has been uh, developed for uh, uh, in 1986 the idea was when you want to design without use of advanced computation or uh, without the help of uh, computers 
these kind of design charts are very useful the similar thing exists when we talk about the uh, 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 concrete design for example in concrete design if you see sp16 right so in that sp16 you will find these kind of charts design charts so those were developed for the era when computers were not very useful but nowadays so many equations and matlab codes are available so but still these charts are sometimes very handy and very useful so on x axis you see the scale distance so for a given explosive yield and given distance of the structure we can calculate the scale distance suppose scale distance is this one so and we want to calculate the reflected over pressure or peak over pressure or a reflected impulse or incident impulse or time of arrival or positive phase duration or shock wave velocity correspondingly we can go suppose we want to see this graph which is giving the shock wave velocity so we go here and correspondingly we read the value here which will be which will give you the shock wave velocity in feet per meter second so as i already explained in my matlab assignment that in blast engineering uh, you have to take care about all these units because if you are inputting the wrong units you will get a wrong answer all of us we we are working in the mks or si units so whenever you see any chart or any equation convert that to first si equation si units and then use in your design because most of these development were done in us in us generally uh, foot pound second these systems are used and that's why most of the charts you will find in fps system and uh, that's how we need to convert it to si before using it in the indian scenario right now there is a dynamic pressure also so when the shock happens and shock waves propagate in the medium there will be the shock induced wind high speed wind that will also start flowing because of that particular blast that will also cause some kind of wind loading on the structure and that will impart some dynamic pressure on the structure so that should also be accounted for in the design you will see that generally dynamic pressure is high, uh, greater compared to the incident uh, uh, pressure when incident pressure is very high see in this particular zone and dynamic pressures are smaller when incident pressures are also smaller because if incident pressure is higher it is telling that the shock wave velocity will be higher wind velocity will be higher and density may also be higher because of which this dynamic pressure becomes very high in case of higher incident pressures and in case of uh, lower incident pressures generally dynamic pressures are found to be smaller compared to the uh, incident pressures so because dynamic pressures depend upon the wind velocity and density of the wind so and density and wind both of them also depend upon the shock pressure incident pressure so that's why dynamic pressure is somehow related with the incident pressure also and these are the uh, design charts developed based on several experimental data and it has been found that these kind of trends are generally observed so most of the uh, times uh, uh, for the purpose of design these pressures are correlated with the incident pressures in a empirical way for example see this chart now uh this blast wave idealization i think now you are already aware because uh, this i have discussed in the matlab assignment so i think there is not uh, much to explain you already know the only thing that i want to highlight that this is the ambient atmospheric pressure okay and uh, blast wave is this extra p0 that is coming on the uh, in the in the environment because of the shock wave so generally when we are talking about the structures uh, we you will see the plots like this 
and they will say assign it as a zero because uh, they are assuming that uh, everything is under a state of rest in the case of atmospheric pressure and whatever extra pressure is there we we want to design for that extra pressure so that's why sometimes you will see like this so yeah this i have already explained now i am coming to the equivalent linearly taking over pressure uh, am i still online or yes okay okay yes, okay so uh, as i already explained in my previous lecture that we can convert an uh, exponential decay with an equivalent uh, linear decay uh, with some conditions for example in this case in the case number 1 uh the first condition to get the equivalent line is that peak over pressure has been kept constant and the second condition comes that the area under the green curve is equal to the area under the black curve which is nothing but specific impulse so like that we can develop our equivalent model linear model so what do you mean by that we need to get the equivalent positive phase duration similarly there can be another second case which says that we have kept pp as constant so for exponential decay and for like linear decay we have assumed that both the uh, 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 both the graphs both the blast pressure histories have same positive phase duration but different peak over pressures so the idea is we want to calculate what is equivalent peak over pressure in case of linear and the second condition will come from the same thing that this and this have the same area under the curve so area under the curve of uh, blast waves is nothing but the specific impulse so we want to equate the specific impulse in these two cases to calculate the equivalent uh, positive phase duration in this case and equivalent uh, peak over pressure in this particular case so linear equations equivalent linear equations can be written like this the linear models linear decay models so linear decay models are very popular for among the engineers because these are very simple and uh, most of the empirical charts design charts are developed for these empirical equations so we can convert any uh, blast loading to the equivalent linear loading with the two conditions so for different cases different different conditions can be used for example this is one class assignment that i want you to solve uh, and submit so in the the two cases that i have shown in the previous slide you have to compute the t equivalent in this case and p0 equivalent in this case so this is the hint that you can use this integral and based on that you have to derive tp equivalent and p0 equivalent and uh, submit your assignment after the class so maybe you can submit on the moodle so i will check it and uh, upload in your mark sheet so this is very simple you have to just do some uh, little mathematics and it will be uh, completed so this is about the class assignment and now generally these three types of idealizations have been found to be used in the literature so in this case this is already discussed so this is that t equivalent so first condition is that we keep the peak over pressure same second condition is we keep the area under the green curve and the dotted curve same equal specific impulse equal specific impulse in the two cases so this particular idealization is useful when we are interested in response at the end of the positive phase because this green curve is considering the impulse of this entire curve this curve so it is considering the energy of entire exponential decay and that's why this will give you the response at the end of the positive phase 
in the second case the first condition is that we keep the same equivalent pressure and second condition is that linear curve is tangent to the exponential curve so if you see very carefully the linear curve and the exponential curve both are same till this particular point so in this case if you use the green curve in calculating the structural response this will give you a correct idea of the early response so when you are interested in assessing the early response of the structure then we use this kind of idealization and the third idealization is when we are interested in the intermediate response so the first condition is we keep the same peak over pressure and second condition is that the line equivalent line passes through the mid pressure p0 by 2 so this particular line will give you an idea of the intermediate response what is happening during the intermediate zone so this idealization is used for these cases so different different situations different different uh, 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 idealizations can be used for different kind of uh, conditions so as a designer it is your responsibility to make a judgment which particular idealization you want to use okay and this is that matlab assignment i think uh, i have already discussed when you joined this matlab assignment so keep doing that assignment and try to submit as soon as possible and uh, i have not given any deadline but uh, you can uh, try to submit uh, and after that when we talk about nuclear explosions this is just a small uh, you can say gk that there are high altitude explosions when explosions are happening at this particular height 30 kilometers then they, it is not important for the structural engineering because this will have only strong emp effects electromagnetic effects which may affect your satellites or may affect your uh, communication systems and when height of burst is below this maybe far below this then it is uh, said empirically that 50 percent energy converts to blast and shock and then such explosions are of interest to the civil engineers in case of uh, nuclear explosions and in case of nuclear explosions generally we observe a second shock also which is not present in chemical explosions because of this uh, flow behind the MAC stem so that also becomes sometimes makes the, uh, the, the things complicated in case of nuclear explosions so all these things have been observed from the cold war data during the cold war so many nuclear explosions were conducted by us army and then they conducted lot of studies lot of empirical studies and based on that data a uh, lot of uh, empirical relations have been developed for nuclear explosions also which can be used for designing uh, nuclear bunkers so a lot of information is available in in the ASC manual that I have also mentioned in our uh, reference books. Now, uh, as I already discussed, there will be dynamic pressures and over pressures. So this is the same for the nuclear explosion also, as was discussed in the case of uh, chemical explosions. So dynamic pressures result from the mass flow behind the shock. And uh, dynamic pressure is a function of the gas density or you can say the, the mixed wind density and the flow velocity and gas density is generally greater than the air density due to compression from the shock and inclusion of dust and smoke that is generated during the explosion that increases the gas density so that's all the lecture uh, if you have any quick questions we can take and uh, I think after that I have covered all the things. So internal explosion, you were present in the last lecture. So where I started internal explosion and uh, till now all the slides have been covered. So my uh, suggestion will be that you try to uh, complete all the assignments 
all the class assignments and please submit on the model this will help you in your grading and uh, in your understanding also and uh, now onwards uh, whatever class you will join you will be able to better understand uh, the discussions so if there is any questions quickly i can take otherwise uh, we can say goodbye to each other are you guys still there or yes sir okay okay yes sir okay okay very nice so tell me is it okay yes sir okay so i will upload this recap lecture also and uh, already everything is uh, very systematically uh, being uh, uploaded on the moodle and uh, i hope it should be okay with you and uh, i think it should be of great help to you so bye bye and now we will meet on uh, tuesday right tuesday is the next class right hello yes sir yes sir yes sir okay okay very good very good so so that's all and have a nice weekend bye bye take care thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you thank you sir